Okay, what you're seeing through the camera, and if you're a faithful follower of me on Facebook as well, you already know that this is the Singer 6221C. And I'm going to be presenting another video as well, and a premiere, highlighting the difference between this machine, which is Brazilian made, and the Sonata 6610, which was private branded by Singer, and also was Brazilian made. Uh, they have some very unique uh, similarities, uh, but they also have some differences as well. So, and I would have a little bit more favor towards this Singer 6221C. As I went through the two machines, it just seemed like the quality standards were much higher on the actual branded machine that was made by Singer versus the private branded uh, Sonata 6610. So, as you may have seen on Facebook, and again, if you're not a Facebook follower, you miss a lot. Um, I already showed these two sew-offs that I did off camera. Here I've got uh, about two to three ounces of uh, genuine cowhide leather. Did kind of a uh, modified zigzag and a zigzag stitch as well. This is not super thin le leather, but uh, at the same time, compared to some of the sew-offs I do, uh, this is just like skipping through the park. And the stitch quality put out by this uh, machine from the 1970s, and again, if you look at it from the side, that's not super thin leather. It's definitely not a garment leather, as you see some people trying to sew off on uh, YouTube or sew off on eBay trying to push a machine and say it's leather sewing. Uh, I always have to chuckle when I see that. Plus, this uh, machine uh, that is Brazilian made, the 6221C, also has a decorative side as well. And you can uh, see these stitches. I presented them on uh, Facebook already. And it really does have a nice variety. Uh, this model, uh, the 6221C, has about 20 stitches, uh, plus uh, built-in buttonholes and just a wide selection of different uh, stitches to choose from. Now, I've already prepared this machine uh, for the customer that came to me with this Sonata. And the Sonata, as I evaluated it, as I said in this other premiere video that's being presented on Tuesday, April the 2nd uh, at 1 p.m. Central Time, it was really beyond the logical path of repairing it. Um, the, the machine had been used up pretty much, and to source the parts and to do the repair was going to well exceed the value uh, of the machine intrinsically and to the customer. So this was a perfect transitional machine that actually is a step up for this customer as well. So that's a that's really a neat situation when it works out that way. So I'm going to go over to my computer real quick so that those of you that don't do Facebook, in this video at least, can kind of see some of the stuff that you miss. So I'm going to lock my camera in place here and just comb through uh, some of the photos that I posted on Facebook that show the um, real low level restorative steps that I took this 6221C through. It was really more of a deep cleaning than it was a restoration, uh, but there were some things that I had to do to it that were a little bit outside the scope of what your local technician would certainly want to tackle. And I have to hit the right button here to advance. There we go. So there's another shot of this. Uh, this is not uh, the best shot of the machine uh, but you if you see that comparison that I put up on Facebook you're going to be able to see um, how the overall body design is pretty much identical between this Singer 6221C and the uh, Sonata that's also Brazilian made. So here I'm starting to dig into this machine a little bit and uh, starting to uh, go through a very detailed inspection to check for uh, any wear um, also dealing with cleanliness issues and general maintenance on the machine. You can see here that this is a belt driven machine. I wouldn't describe it as a true positive traction direct drive type uh, setup, uh, but it's better than some of the ones I've seen. And it's got a nice uh, solid belt, a cogged belt that's going to try to uh, grip that uh, plastic uh, uh, pulley system in order to drive this machine well. There's even a better shot of it uh, there you can see 
uh, and the belt's in excellent shape, uh, so it doesn't even need uh, replacement. Accessing the other side of the panel, uh, where you can see more of that pulley system and belt system as well. It runs the full length of the machine. Here you've got a real close shot of it. You may not be able to see it on YouTube, but on Facebook with the pictures I posted, you can actually see that the belt is stamped uh, Brazilian made. Whoops. I kind of went crazy there. I, I, I jumped forward too quick. I apologize. This is a cover I'm taking off on the bottom so I can access the bottom of the uh, raceway and hook system. And there's quite a bit of maintenance uh, adjustments and checks that I have to do that due to that as well. Here you can see I've removed the bobbin uh, retainer, uh, which is plastic. And I'm doing a deep cleaning on the inside of the raceway. And also when you, uh, when you take that raceway apart, uh, you discover just no matter how you feel like you've maintained your machine, uh, just how much crud and junk uh, can collect in there. One of the things I do as well, and this is kind of a tip to share with you, uh, once I've taken everything out of that raceway area so I have a clear shot, I always put a little bit of lubrication in there, either a standard uh, sewing machine motor oil uh, or a little bit of kerosene and spin that up so that it really lubricates all of those uh, parts and all of that surface area in there before I reassemble it with the clean parts. What that's going to do is that's going to extend um, the, the quality and the life of that uh, hook system and raceway. It's also going to generate uh, a longer lasting quality stitch because as that area gets uh, dirty you're going to have a number of issues everything from bird nesting to skip stitches and other quality issues. This is the top of the machine. Uh, you can see here in the shot, it's part of the cam system. Cam system in the uh, 6221C is about twice as large, which only makes sense because it has twice as many uh, stitches. A lot of plastic in this 1970s machine, which again um, is an opportunity uh, for uh, breakdown and failure. Um, and again, as, uh, as our friends that own these machines, uh, learn more and more about our vintage machines, our, our genuinely vintage machines, uh, they're more inclined to take that step over to cross over from these semi-vintage machines from the 70s to our, uh, our vintage machines that are much, much earlier uh, than that. All right, so I'm going to move back over now to this uh, machine on the other workbench. And what we're going to do now is just do a little bit of a stitch off. Uh, you already saw these. I showed these to you in the opening shot. The two stitch offs I did uh, on these two separate pieces of uh, uh, genuine cowhide leather. Uh, beautiful stitches, as are these. But I also wanted to do a couple on camera as well. I think that this is beneficial to uh, Kathy, who is going to be uh, uh, taking this machine in place of the Sonata that uh, she brought to me with a lot of mechanical issues and uh, it's just nice to know that this machine uh, probably not as much uh, as the Sonata has a greater capacity uh, to sew lighter grades of leather uh, if she chooses to do that. So I'm going to move these sew offs that I already did out of the way and uh, we will do a little bit of leather sewing with this machine. I don't know if I'm actually going to do any more decorative sewing because uh, I've already done that off camera, but at least I know my friends on YouTube always love to see any machine uh, sewing uh, leather. So, all right, so a single layer of uh, genuine cowhide leather, again, about three to four ounces. And this again is the Singer 6221C. I did not mention uh, it is powered by a 0.75 amp motor. Now, don't right away get overly impressed because the motors from the 70s 
were really not commensurate with the motors that were made back in the 50s, uh, the 60s, and prior to that time. So, you know, as I sewed on this machine and did different things, it's probably not really, I wouldn't rate it as 0.75, but that's how it's stamped on the machine. Enough said, right? <laughs> All right. All right. So here we go with a leather sew off, and I'll be quiet. You can just listen to how this machine sounds uh, as it's sewing. All right, so that's a single layer, and I think I'll zip down it as well uh, with a zigzag, just so you can see um, the machine sewing one of the option stitches that it has. And I've said this before, when you're sewing leather, if you can lay down a real nice stitch, and, and I don't know if you can see that through the camera or not, but that's also a, a drop-dead gorgeous uh, lock stitch. Uh, also, maybe if I put it like that, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, and I can zoom in this, zoom in on this afterwards as well. But a machine that can lay down a real nice um, uh, zigzag on leather, uh, that's really a, a strong evidence of how that machine has been prepared because zigzags are just going to demand a lot more when it comes to what that machine has to put out to push that through with the needle movement and sway that's part of that as well. All right, so what I'm doing right now, you can't see it because you're down at the needle, is I made an adjustment to set this machine up for a zigzag. Uh, I also changed the stitch length, length from five down to three, and we'll see how this machine does with a zigzag now. Here we go. There we go. I wanted to get just one more little stitch out of there before I gave up uh, the foot control to that uh, stitch off there. So, all right, so let me get that back in place. All right, that also looks really good. I, I probably would have made some uh, stitch length and width adjustments on it if I really was shooting for a particular look from that stitch. Uh, but that looks, I'm really, I'm really satisfied with that. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm kind of coming off camera and I'm gonna put it in front so that I can uh, zoom in on it a little bit and uh, give you a chance to see uh, these stitches that we just did. All right. Where are you? There you are. All right, so obviously the first, the first stitch we did is on the bottom. Um, just a straight stitch machine uh, type uh, output. And then we switched it over to a zigzag, kind of a stretch option. And uh, both of those look really, really good. I'm really satisfied. Uh, again, a 1970s machine is not gonna have all the attributes and quality of our much older vintage machines but I think it did a real decent job. It certainly would put to shame some of the stitch quality that you see from the very contemporary machines that you pick up at a lot of, lot of the retailers. So I'm just gonna flip this around now, give you a chance to see the back of that as well. When you're only doing a single layer of this type of cowhide, you can actually see that lock-in stitch. As you increase it to two and three and four layers, it's a whole lot more difficult uh, to be able to see that. Even on here you can kind of see that nap is uh, masking uh, just how gorgeous that lock stitch is on the zigzag and also the straight on the bottom there. So I'm really happy with that. You can see on the edge here again this is not a garment leather. This is uh, a fairly decent thickness of genuine cow cowhide leather. And I'm not going to push this machine uh, to two layers uh, simply because a lot of the components again are plastic uh, and again without having uh, um, without having the confidence that this machine is really going to be able to handle that I don't want to 
push it outside of the boundaries. This is not a Husqvarna green machine. This is not a FAF machine. Uh, it's a 1970s model uh, Singer. So I think one layer is more than enough uh, to demonstrate that it has the capacity uh, to do uh, leather sewing. Now I will do I will do one more stitch for you, and I've got this big old piece of uh, of uh, U.S. Army grade canvas. So I'm just going to cut it down a little bit real quick so I don't waste it. And uh, we will zip down and just do a quick decorative stitch on this as well. And that way you can also hear the machine operate uh, sewing uh, one of the decorative options. And setting, setting the machine for sewing decorative is really, really, really user friendly uh, with this machine. As a matter of fact, I can show that to you if I come out on my shot a little bit. Whoops. I can also show you that I can kick the camera as well. <laughs> Many of you had a seizure or other episode, I apologize for that. That was totally an accident. All right, so here we've got a wider shot on this uh, Singer machine, which gives you the opportunity to kind of see how I set um, the decorative stitch. So right now we're set for uh, straight, uh, actually we were set for straight stitching, right now we're set for uh, zigzag. And uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this big knob so that I move it to this red dot here at the very top. And that's going to give me control over um, the cam stitches that are uh, labeled in red all the way across these different stitch patterns. And I think I'm going to pick one uh, just randomly here. Uh, I'll probably go with, uh, uh, why don't I go with number... Number 16 is kind of cool. Let me turn it over to 16. And again, this control right here is going to allow you to change stitch patterns. It's also going to uh, allow you to change needle alignment as well. It's going to be a dual function. So I've got that set. I'm going to get my material in place. Press your foot down. Move these things out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, I'd say that's probably a little bit wide. I'm going to get closer in on the needle so you can kind of see what I'm seeing when it comes to stitching. Now, you can make some adjustments to stitch width uh, when you're sewing some of the other stitches, but it's not going to do a whole lot once you get into that setting where you have the red dot at the top and it's going to really derive everything from that cam. So we'll just make we'll, we'll make a slight adjustment, but it's not going to change the look of that stitch very much. I'm going to zoom in on the needle. Kind of fun to see the movement of that needle as we go through a cam generated stitch. All right, so this again is going to be stitch. Did I? If I said 16, I was mistaken. It's actually going to be uh, stitch 17 because we have. Uh, the red dot setting. If we go away from the red dot, then we would be sewing um, uh, the cam generated stitch number 16. So this, I stand corrected, this is stitch 17. Here we go. stop right in the right position. Isn't that fun? And I'm just going to pull the thread a little bit and then I'll kind of zoom in so you can see uh, this stitch. It's kind of a an odd looking stitch but I could see it being incorporated into a quilt or something like that as a nice uh, decorative stitch to border uh, you know another pattern. I don't know if it's a standalone stitch but I think it would complement uh, some of the other stitches uh, and some of the other um, applique or quilting work that would be out there. Now you can see the way that looks and I'm going to actually go back up to the machine 
I'm going to go, go past it one more time. And then we'll go up to the machine and you can see it actually on that setting again. I think initially I said uh, stitch uh, 16, but it's actually 17. You can see it right there. So again, the, the way you're going to switch between stitches on this machine is if you want any of the stitches that have the red number underneath them, you're going to have to go to a point of setting that dial. Where am I? With the red dot at the top. If you want to access any of the other stitches that are not in red, say for example the number 16 that I had initially uh, said we were going to sew, uh, then you simply move it away from the red and then adjust anywhere within that range of the uh, stitch length. So you would basically turn the um, the knob uh, clockwise and then uh, go back to a setting that's going to be uh, within the range of uh, up to five as far as stitch length. So this is again just a quick little video to kind of uh, showcase and show you a little bit of what this uh, 1970s 6221C uh, can do from a light leather standpoint and from a decorative standpoint and uh, I think it's a neat little machine. Again I would call it kind of quasi vintage from the 70s but nonetheless uh, it is uh, by many definitions a vintage machine uh, being 40 plus years old. So all right well stay tuned for other videos that are going to cover machines that you haven't seen before. And, uh, you know, again, appreciate you being a subscriber. If you watch this channel regularly, as my stats would indicate, and you never have subscribed, consider doing that. That way, when I post videos like this, you receive notice right away, and uh, you can just stay up to speed and not miss anything. And also, again, if you're not a Facebooker, consider doing that. Uh, set up a Facebook account just for the sake of viewing uh, the different posts that I put on my Facebook business page. It covers a lot of stuff and again you are missing out a lot if uh, if you're not tuned into that. So alright God bless you guys stay tuned for more great uh, videos more great pre premieres like this.